Congress wants to ban stock trading again. So this is a crazy story. Here's what's going on. The Department of Justice, along with eight other states, is suing Google for breaking antitrust laws because the US government believes that Google has a monopoly over its ad and search technology and it wants to break up Google into smaller companies. But right before this happened, one member of Congress managed to sell 30,000 shares worth between $1.5 and $3 million between December 20th and December 28th, conveniently four weeks before this lawsuit happened. And this, of course, had the internet furious about how the timing of that trade just made no sense, that none of this should be legal, that this is a classic example of insider trading, and that our government is absolutely broken. Right now, people are wondering, how is it possible that a member of Congress who makes a little over $220,000 per year is also worth over $170 million? Because think about it, if you could make $220,000 a year and you could hypothetically save 100% of that income without ever paying taxes on it, which is literally impossible, it would still take you 772 years just to get to that net worth. So once again, this information is reigniting the conversation about banning members of Congress from trading stocks and something called the Pelosi Act, which stands for Preventing Elected Leaders from Owning Securities and Investments Act. And once again, it's just meant to ban members of Congress from trading stocks and owning them while they're in office. So in today's video, I wanna make sense of everything that's going on and how this will affect us. So let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the absolutely crazy story. Now, before we start this video, I just wanna say politics is extremely touchy and I don't have an agenda in this video. I just wanna show you all the facts and then you can make up your mind for yourself. But the first thing I just wanna quickly mention is Google breaking antitrust laws. Antitrust laws date all the way back to the 19th century, starting with the Sherman Antitrust Act, which was passed by the United States Congress in 1890. And the purpose of that law was to prevent monopolies and anti-competitive business practices. And over the years, the US government used used that act to break up big monopolies like Standard Oil and American Tobacco. And in 1914, the Clayton Antitrust Act was passed, which made those laws even stronger. Now in the 60s and 70s, these laws were used in several high profile cases against companies like AT&T and IBM, and more recently, Google and Facebook. And the main argument is that these tech giants have become so big that they are hurting competition and therefore harming consumers. So that's the backdrop of this conversation, which leads us to how knowing this information ahead of time about Google being sued by the DOJ would have been extremely helpful. And politicians are obviously on the cutting edge of knowing this because they're the ones in charge. And it turns out one member of Congress was able to sell their Google position before this lawsuit was made public and maybe make a little bit of money from it. And that's why people are speculating that there was some foul play at hand, but was there really? Lucky for us, we can actually see what members of Congress are doing with their trades because of the Stock Act, so here's what I found. So the first question is, was there money made from the sale of that stock? And the answer is yes, but it's not clear exactly how much was made. But here's what I think is the biggest truth the internet is missing out on. The stock trade only looked smart for a very brief amount of time. They would have made a lot more money if they had just kept the stock, and here's why. The first sale happened on December 20th. Now from December 20th to December 20th, 28th, the stock went down 3.4%. So it looked really smart, like they sold and then the stock went down, conspiracy, right? Now they sold some more on December 28th and the trade continued to look smart all the way until January 5th when the stock was still down 3.1%. But after that point, the stock went up. And on January 20th, the stock went way up after Google announced their layoffs. So if they had access to insider information, it would have made way more sense to just keep the stock because they would have been up over 10% at this point. Now, ironically, TikTok refers to Ms. Nancy Pelosi as a psychic and as the biggest market whale that should be watched and paid attention to like crazy. But I think she gets way more flack than she deserves. This is because in 2021, Ms. Pelosi didn't even make the list of the top five trading members of Congress. She was number six, which is still Still really good, but not quite the top five. And in all of 2022, she didn't make the list of the top 10 because she didn't make any money in 2022. She lost close to 20%. In fact, you would have done better than Miss Pelosi if you had just bought one stock, VOO. Now you wouldn't have made money, but you would have lost a little bit less. And you would think that someone with access to insider information would at least do better than the average, or at the very least, not lose money and just break even, but that didn't happen. Unless it was planned all along. But actually, when it comes to insider trading, it wasn't because insider trading implies that the public had no access or knowledge to this information, which is that the DOJ would sue Google, 
But if you do a quick Google search right now, you'll find a Bloomberg article from August 9th, 2022. And the title of that article says, DOJ is preparing to sue Google over ad market as soon as September. So there's your insider info. It was publicly available. And if you were a shareholder of Google, chances are you would have seen it too if you were paying attention. So the point I'm trying to say is, Miss Pelosi is not the real problem. There is a problem and it's much bigger than what anyone is talking about. So the question is, do politicians even trade and how good are they and do they have access to insider info? A good place to start is to look at the last few years of trading data to see what we get. For example, between 2019 and 2021, it was found that roughly 183 senators or representatives reported a trade. And according to the New York Times, more than half of them sat on congressional committees that would have given them potential access to insider information that would have given them a huge advantage over the public. Now that represents roughly 18% of Congress, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a lot. Imagine going to Taco Bell and asking them what's inside of their tacos and they're like, well, 82% of our ingredients are natural and the other 18% are made with poison that will make you absolutely sh yourself. You'd probably think twice about going to eat there. I mean, I wouldn't. The risk is worth the reward. But you should probably think twice not financial advice. Here's what kind of blew my mind though. We know that professional fund managers, the guys that trade stocks for a living, can't always outperform the market consistently. But data found that between 2020 and 2021, some members of Congress were able to outperform the market on average, including House Democrats, House Republicans, Senate Democrats, and almost Senate Republicans. Even the Stock Act, which is supposed to make members of Congress accountable by having them report their stock trades within 45 days, isn't always followed. According to Insider, they found 72 members of Congress out of compliance with the Stock Act because they're either inaccurately reporting what they're buying and selling, or they're just not reporting it at all. The point is, the American people are fed up with feeling like the stock market is just rigged against them, so we wanna do something about it, which is why we have to talk about some Something called the Pelosi Act. Reintroduced by US Senator Josh Hawley, the Pelosi Act stands for Preventing Elected Leaders from Owning Securities and Investments Act. And I have to say, it's a really creative acronym. If you follow your dreams, anything is possible. But what this act does is it prevents members of Congress from holding, buying and selling stocks and equivalent investments during their time in office. Now, the only exceptions to this rule would be owning things like index funds, mutual funds and ETFs or exchange traded funds and US treasury bonds. And the reason they're able to own all these is because they're not specific companies. Remember, ETFs are bundles of stocks that are held in one security. But the law said nothing about Bitcoin and NFTs. Now, it also gives them and their spouses six months from the time of assuming office to divest, aka sell and get rid of any conflicting assets that are prohibited or to put them in a blind trust throughout their whole time in office. And it also says if they're found to violate this law, they would have to give up all the profits they made on those investments to the American people via the US Treasury. And it also says they would lose the ability to deduct those losses off of their income, AKA tax loss harvesting. So that's the law. Now let me give you my personal thoughts about it. Some politicians have a net worth that makes no sense to me. Now sure, some of them will marry into money, but it doesn't explain all of it. As a politician though, they have a front row seat to lawmaking conversations. Even just by knowing what their colleagues are talking about, even if they disagree with each other, gives them a huge upper hand in knowing which industry and which sector is about to be affected, which gives them the ability to tell their friends and family to buy and sell those assets ahead of time. That explains a huge portion of how they've made their wealth. Now, to the rest of us, of course this feels unfair because we don't have access to the secret insider information to make us rich. So of course, we wanna ban their ability to do that. But unfortunately, that's never gonna happen. First, you'll never get the politicians to agree to doing this. One comparison I saw that I really liked is it's like asking a bear to ban his own ability from eating salmon ever again. It's just never gonna happen. And throughout history, there have been plenty of opportunities where both Republicans and Democrats have had unanimous control over the Senate, the House, and the presidency, and none of them ever got rid of their conflicts of interest. But really the biggest reason why it will never happen is because it's unenforceable. Think about it, if you ban a Congress member's ability to trade stocks, you can't ban their family. And even if you could, you couldn't ban their friends or their friends of friends. And on and on this goes until you eventually get into a gray area where it becomes impossible to define what it means to have insider info 
and what it means to actually use it. See why it's impossible? The worst a politician will ever face is maybe public scrutiny, but that's about it. There's really only one solution to this problem that I can think of that they can do right now, and that is to give us an exchange-traded fund or an ETF that tracks congressional trading. And they can divide it however they want. They can do House and Senate, Democrats and Republicans, or they can just put it into one stock. I want to be able to go on Robinhood and to be able to buy the Pelosi ETF and just track and mirror the performance of Congress members. That's what would make it fair. Now, sure, the expense ratio in terms of how much it would cost to run this fund would be pretty high, maybe upwards of 1% because tracking all these stock trades would take a lot of work, but that's fine with me. I don't care how high the expense ratio is because I want the expense ratio to be paid from their paychecks. Those are tax dollars at work. That's what they could do right now if they really cared about making everything fair. Now, as far as actually buying this ETF and how it would compare against the S&P 500, we'd have to run studies and that's a completely different video, but the point is if they cared, that's what they would do. And for now, anyone that tells you we should ban insider trading to me is just virtue signaling so you can get excited and vote for them and put them in office. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stuff. Links are all down below. Go track the stonks automatically with a spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon. Bye-bye.